No, oh, fresh, first fresh pop of the program. That was on air anyway. That was on air. Welcome back, yeah, everyone. You guys are liquored up over there. That's just beer from our friends down at Revelry Brewing Company. Yeah, if you're ever in Charleston, make sure to head down to 10 Conroy Street. Check that out. Doesn't yeah. get any better than that. Mm-mm. Beer and uh, location. Little got a nice roof. rooftop deck. Yeah. We got some rosé, if that's what you're into. Yes, they got some wine. If you, you have like a sparkling rosé? <laughs> if you're a fancy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, be sure to hit us up on the socials, at the FF Dynasty. Please, no more abbreviations. The Soch. And we're... Uh, and it's a brief. Let's get right back. <laughs> Let's get back into it here. <laughs> We're going to jump into some more guys that either, you know, kind of jumped up or fell down from February from the last time that we checked this out. We're going to lead it off here with Juju Smith-Schuster, Jr. the third. Uh, he went from <laughs> up to 28 from 36. Wasn't ready for that Jr. the third. So right is there. it the Martavis Bryant trade that, that, that catapults him that far, or was he just on just a trajectory that couldn't be stopped? Or what is this? Why, why do you... what? Are you okay with this move? Do you like Juju at 28? I mean, 36 is... Well, what I'll, what I what's really cool about the exercise that we have, this number from 36 to that down to 28 or up to 28 for Juju and all the ones that we've been talking about is this is from, like you said, February, February to when June. we did this the last time. So what's cool about these numbers that we're working with is it incorporates free agency and the draft. Right. So you have a lot of team roster manipulation up and down. This guy's cut. This guy got traded. Hey, we signed this guy, whatever. All of this goes in. So, yes, you have the Martavis Bryant. He's out of here. He gets traded in the draft over here to Oakland. and But then they bring in James Washington. So, it would if at one point, yeah, Martavis Bryant has that name cachet from we saw him on the NFL stage crushing long balls and, and you know, being awesome for a couple of games and then being a knucklehead. But then you bring in James Washington, who's equally as awesome, but not, not even close to being a knucklehead. So... I'm not. Sh- I I don't know where this 36 to 28 bump came from from Juju. I, obviously, he's freaking awesome as a rookie. He put up a a 33 point game, a 20 point game, and 10 to the season last year. Weeks 15 and 16, taking advantage of the Antonio Brown issues, had 17, 19 and a half, and week 17 would no Antonio Brown at all. Had 35 in the last week of the season. So. He obvi- those are the types of numbers that I was pointing out where there's a couple of games that was absolutely ridiculous, like coming out of Stephon Diggs after his rookie season saying, hey, look at these types of numbers that he put up for a couple games. Obviously, after his rookie season, Juju's a lot more touted and, and more valuable than I, we, we got Diggs his second year coming in and going in his second year. Casey and I drafted him in the seventh round of a startup on the FFPC. Um, and so now Juju's hanging out in early third round. Um, so you, you into that or no? Obviously my, my gut reaction is to say no. Um, but this man's got a ton of fanfare and he's, he's a gamer and he's fun. He's, you know, he's active on social media and his whole bike got stolen thing. People love some dang juju. Steelers have a large umbrella. They do have a very large umbrella. Well said. What you think, Jay Wayne? Would you say it's a curtain? (laughs) <laughs> well they, they they put a curtain around that the umbrella a very very smart whippy i'm with you big co i my first inclination is to be like no way man but then you look at some of the players after him like i i could i could maybe swing on travis kelsey who's at 29 oh instead no of doubt juju. give yeah. me kelsey all day over juju yeah but then you got your brandon cooks and you and your adam thielen you could you could probably make an argument for either of those go over juju it's probably a little too high. Twenty eight's probably still a little too high for my Yeah, I think I think I'm also with you there. Um it's a obviously he had some games with some production, but it's maybe a little bit like Joe Mixon and we were just talking about like he's Juju got on the field and, and had some some spots. This might be a little too high and inflated because of what the potential is. He's a stealer. Had, had there. a fair amount of spots and they were solid spots. You so. were talking about how, you know, you if you have Antonio Brown you get uh the third you get this there's a lot more eyes saw juju smith schuster last year the the steelers right. are played you know they get a lot of time where they're on the national coverage and all that kind of stuff plus sure. they're like you said and they have a the wi- coast, they have a so wide they're... umbrella a lot of people like the steelers right. um, they're usually a good team so there's been a lot of eyes on them hey he's a heck of a player 
a good blocker, which will surely keep you on the field. But you do add James Washington, who we talked about last week, is probably better than Martavis Bryant. Definitely a better teammate. He's a fantastic vertical threat. Le'Veon Bell's still there. Like it's and Antonio Brown's gonna get his. Yeah. At some point you have to start weighing like how many there's a ton of volume over there. To, I guess they're gonna throw it a lot, I guess. So Well, there is know. volume, but like you say, there's no chance that Le'Veon Bell and, and Antonio Brown don't dominate the touches, which don't dominate the targets, which they both of those guys were in there crushing when Juju made his plays, but that's Juju made there's a stat going around on Twitter where I think Juju made some ungodly percentage of his, you know, total yardage on five catches. Right. You know, we all remember the 99 yard catch or whatever it was against my, I think it was against my Lions, and he absolutely just had some explosive, explosive plays. And I mean, his yeah, it was a 97 yard or his long as 97 yards. But you know, when you make that those those big of plays, then your fantasy points are there and nobody can take them away from you. But those things might not be quite sustainable. Bit yeah. of a fugazi. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think for me personally, I'm I, I can see if I'm on the clock with with some money on the line, I'm just going to have a hard time taking Juju Smith. Like hopefully Devonte Freeman fell a slot or two. I'll take Travis Kelsey. Um, I'd probably take Jarek McKinnon over him at this point. Like Brandon Cooks is not far removed from being a top ten wide receiver. Yeah. Like this is you know I don't don't love Brandon Cooks, but I just feel like the fanfare is so much stronger for Schuster than Brandon Cooks. But oh, right now for sure. Antonio Brown got 162 targets. Count him in for, and that's missing game week 17. So count him up for another 160. Juju got 80 last year, which is solid for a rookie. Le'Veon got his 107. Give him those again. But Martavis Bryant is gone, and he had 84. All right. Obviously, James Washington's coming in. But Juju playing as well as any rookie could play last year yeah. got 80. So I imagine that with not many teams give away give give away a hundred targets to a running back, but the Steelers are going to do it, and then they also have the hundred and sixty target target hog of Antonio Brown. But I feel like I feel like Juju's uh, probably a good between that eighty to eighty five ninety targets again, which is that and they and the, the he's projected for around about the same thing he did last year, sixty catches for and a little bit less yardage because of those long plays are quite mm-hmm. un, unsustainable and the projection models understand that. So he's actually projected to have a, a weaker season, right? And and not quite as many fantasy points just because the fantasy points he scored last year were absolutely ridiculous on those big long plays. So, but he seems. He seems a bit safe because he's awesome. <laughs> and, and people and, love him. And like you said, there's a lot of but people who love some Steelers you, and Juju Smith. But if you think if you think about the the thirty point games that I mentioned in the high twenties, and you take away, you back off some of those the ninety seven yarder. That was a thirty point game. Yeah. You know, you take away a play where he scored twenty points on one play almost, and like the other ones, the if he if he really does only catch sixty balls for eight hundred yards and a couple of touchdowns, like that's going to be a hard start. He's going to be a a yeah. low end flex starter, and you're tr- tr- taking him in the beginning of the third round. That's not what you want to be putting on your roster to basically to take the words out of Jay Wayne's mouth. It's a little too high. Yeah, a little bit. So we're all pretty much gonna pass on that one for the most part. Um, let's see what's next on the list here. So McKinnon, we talked. I talked about McKinnon for a second. He's up to 33 from 108. Obviously, you know why yeah. the jump happened. There's not much explaining to do. Um, are you guys okay with with taking? I just said I'd probably take him over Juju because I I like the two a two year window on McKinnon to just be crushing some PPR points in the Niners regardless of if he stays there longer than that or not. But um, well, the one thing at thirty three is is it are you are you in the one thing I got about the 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 McKinnon thing at thirty three, he's behind he's fourteen spots right here ver- below below Christian McCaffrey. And if he doesn't get hurt, there's no chance he doesn't do everything that Christian McCaffrey did does. last year. And McC- did last Christian year. McCaffrey and Duke Johnson were back in RB ones last year, just like we were talking about with the Melvin Gordon stuff. They're back in RB ones with very limited carries, very limited rushing yards, and a ton of catches. Okay, right. And they made a couple of plays. There's no chance if Jarek McKinnon doesn't get hurt that Kyle Shanahan doesn't draw him up for a back-end RB1 season, but just on the PPR floor, his floor is tremendous. And his upside is he they use him just like, you know, the Falcons and the, the, the when they get that play action going in that, right. that, that stretch zone, and all of a sudden there's plays to be made. Obviously, the, 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 the biggest thing is the 49ers doesn't walk onto the field week one with the type of talent that the Falcons had as far as like Julio Jones and defense stressed out. 
but they will have the exact same type of plan and scheme and people running in all different directions and they got Jimmy G and for what it's worth there's no chance that, that McKinnon doesn't pay back on the even even though McKinnon's name doesn't belong at 33 ADP because of what he's been in the NFL this far if Kyle Shanahan says he belongs that's I got to roll with it yeah I just I can't you pick you picked him up to be a mismatch for you and that's what you're shooting for with the 49ers I can't see him getting less than 12 or 15 carries a game to go with that yeah and he's at least shown that he can run between the tackles whereas Christian McCaffrey hasn't necessarily I don't not believe that Christian McCaffrey can I agree but I completely he's shown agree. that he can, can at least do that and well, Jimmy the G 49ers are going to score points they're going to be very efficient like he's going to get there was eight Carlos Hyde saw 87 targets last right. year Jimmy like, G might scramble a time or two but he's no Cam Newton he's not right. taking anything from you at the goal line he's not running around for 60 yards like Cam does sometimes that offense is going to score more points than Carolina did last year they're going to score more points than the Browns did last year the Brown, both of those teams aren't very weren't very strong offensively this is going to be a much better team that stays out on the field a little bit more and is very efficient with what they're trying to do and the points that they're going to score yeah. and how they're going to do it so given, given health he gets 50, give me give me two years of what he's, given, i think he's going to do given health he gets 50 50 to 80 carries more than jared more than christian mccaffrey yeah for sure what do you think jay wayne <gasps> too high for you or? i mean it's up there it's pretty high but, I mean, I, I understand everything you guys are saying. I can't really argue against it. Um, he's sandwiched here between two pretty solid-looking running backs. We can get Darius Geis and Jordan Howard. Good point. Are, are are you taking him over both those guys? That PPR floor, neither one of those guys has it. That upside... Him maybe and Howard it, are polar opposites. Right, right. That, that upside could be argued, and if Jordan Howard... He does have this Bears just coming out party with the whole offense with Nagy and everything they got going on over there. Jordan Howard could be awesome, but with that 34th ADP, there's still a gamble in your week to week floor. Whereas, you know, obviously, if Jordan Howard doesn't, if, if, if Cohen takes the next step and, Co- and Howard, you know, grinds out that 78, 84 rushing yards one week with no touchdowns, you're getting eight points. Jerick McKinnon is going to have eight points in the first quarter with a couple of catches and some runs. Yeah. No, nah, I, I think it's going to be really hard. Like you said, I think the best point was that the Duke Johnson and the, and the CMC being kind of back end RB1s slash the highest end RB twos. Barring injury, just, that's the floor here. I think that's the floor with a with a great ceiling. All right. So I think I think we'll that's kind of where I'm at. I like I like Jordan Howard a whole lot and I couldn't argue if you said, hey, I like this guy just being a pure kind of running back and grinding it out, getting you eighty yards and a touchdown and three or four catches every week. I'm not gonna argue with you too too much. Darius Geis I haven't seen Darius Geis do anything. Now, what's cool about this is is this is the exact spot where if you had the twelfth or eleventh pick in the draft you had like, you know, 112 and 2 1 or something. You come back around here. This is, I think you double down on these types of guys. Like, you can grab a Jarek McKinnon and a Jordan Howard if you, you know, if you got a chance and you get your PPR floor with a humongous Kyle Shanahan upside. And then you got a guy who, and Jordan Howard, as well as he is disrespected, he did climb on this list, as Casey's about to tell you somehow with all the hate that's going around. But with running into brick walls for the last two years and in, in dinosaur archaic offenses with zero creativity and zero threats on the outside for the pass, for the defense to even have to worry about from a r- passing game situation, Jordan Howard. Howard's been absolutely amazing, all things considered. And you could get these two guys as a back to back in third and fourth round in your yeah. picks, and then you could be. See, I would just pretty. feel a lot better if, if like, uh, what the guy we were just, if Mixon was kind of in this range, and I could go back to back on Mixon and somebody else. Now you got two guys, and you're not as concerned about. Right, right, yeah. And one, one more thing for for Jarek McKinnon, uh, Big Co. You mentioned it off the air about <clears throat> the the guys that are behind him. Joe, uh, Joe Williams and Matt Breida, you know, Matt Breida's got, I think, a 163 ADP, and Joe Williams is down at 272. You know, though that you could get the whole backfield. Yeah, thanks for saying pretty forgot, cheap. I got know? all riled up, forgot to say it. Whether or not you have Jarek McKinnon, you have no excuse not to have like a you Joe Williams now, or a Matt, Br- Matt Breida. But if you, ha- if you take the stab and you get and you put McKinnon on your team at the end of the third round or before, there's you have no excuse. You have to get Breida because he's so cheap. He's not going to mean as much to anybody else as he will for you. And Joe Williams is free. Obviously, I'm, I don't know how big your benches are from league sure, to league, but sure. you got to get one of these guys if you got McKinnon. And if you don't have McKinnon, you should be looking at one of these guys. Just because put Breida on the bottom of your bench. If 
Yeah. Uh, why Williams. wouldn't you want everything that Kyle Shanahan brings to the running back position? Like, right. why wouldn't you want as many of these guys as you can get? Just, Obviously, one of them is going to cost you a third round pick, but the other guys are free. Yeah. Right. Take and em. look what he did in Atlanta. There was multiple backs productive Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Trend here in the NFL. It could happen again for sure with this 49er team. So, yeah. give me all the Niners. Yeah, and to this this to this point, they still just got movement. <laughs> they still got a pretty unproven wide receiver core. Yeah, I mean, he's good. like know? I said, there was eighty seven targets for Hyde last year. There's there was a lot of three and outs in the beginning of that season, and there's yeah. gonna be longer sustained drives. And yeah, there's no way McKinnon's not seeing more than eighty seven targets. And I think Breida had another thirty seven on top of that. Breida had so. thirty something by himself. Those are gonna he's gonna keep those. Yeah. So I, and if if McKinnon gets hurt, he's gonna explode. Him anyway, or Joe Williams, one of the two or both. That's a good good way to good. Good spot to uh, bring that up there, Jay Wayne. That's a good call. That's why we keep you around. <laughs> um, we'll keep See, this. Thing, I listen. We'll keep this thing moving. Jordan Howard, like we just mentioned, is up from forty-one to thirty-four. There's no way I saw that coming. No, just how nothing. That, how's that just even non- possible? A barrage of hate out there for Everybody Jordan Howard. Everybody hates him. What do you? I mean, how does he come up, Jay Wayne? What can you explain this? How in the world he made it? Everybody and, listened to us and how uh, naggy in the scheming offense. <laughs> yeah, that, that must be what happened. Yeah, yeah. I, it, this is the John Fox leaves town effect. This yeah, has to thank be. God. This is it. But he was only good because his name, John Fox continued to run a negative game script. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the only reason. Yeah. So uh, this kind of this this shocks me. But everything I just said about Jordan Howard, this is what I expect out of him. That I don't. I don't. You don't. You don't have the PPR floor, but you do have the improved offense upside. If Tariq Cohen takes that next step in the. You know, Nagy loves Tariq Cohen in the media right now, and there's nothing that he can say that's not absolutely fantastic about Cohen. But Jordan Howard's been a bell cow for this team, and if, you know, the Bears take that huge step on offense like a lot of people are assuming they will, and even if it takes more than, you know, just an offseason, if it takes half the year to get cranked up, Trubisky's, you know, looked fairly decent last year, looked nice and poised for a rookie, didn't – didn't so, get in there to the second half of the season, but I, th- I think there's a lot to be maybe, said. Maybe that's some of it. Trubisky, people love him for, for some reason. Um, maybe they all went back and watched that that Minnesota Viking game in 2016 when Jordan Howard had his coming out party. You go back and watch that game, and you, you're all for Jordan Howard. He was, yeah. tore them boys up. They supposedly had the best defense in the league, just and he just tore cats. them up. Tore yeah. them up. All right, let's keep this thing rolling. Jarvis Landry down 10 spots from February ADP to now 27 to 37. The Browns effect. <laughs> Rides the opposite of the, which I guess it's just kind of, Cleveland has a nice setup going over there, but Stench it's just, about it, though. there could be a volume p- potential issue, and it is the Browns. you got a double whammy there. Yeah, I, what do you guys well, think there? In the, uh, in the mock draft I mentioned earlier with the Superflex, I later on obviously with the super flex it further pushes these numbers down but landry was on the board and i selected marvin jones i just had to with the touchdown upside and the browns factor and the tie mm, rod factor just had to but and and you know Ooh. and it's a mock and it really doesn't matter ah, it's no a no mock. no but even though even though it's, it's a mock, Telling ryan mcdowell i got landry <laughs> everywhere and it was just a diversification not that it even matters because it's just a mock but <laughs> right. like Diversify in my, my mind mocks. these are it's, it's a mock it's a practice reps mm-hmm. it's a practice rep mm-hmm. I, I i think this guy's over here talking about practice yeah. perfect <laughs> practice makes perfect when Baker gets in there, I think Jarvis could be just just like normal Jarvis. But I don't think what? Tyrod Taylor is going to be peppering him with targets. I just don't. I think know. it's an easy check down for Tyrod to keep drives alive and keep moving. Jarvis Man, is going to be just fine. I hope so. I, I got Jarvis see. everywhere. I got and Jarvis in well, all my leagues. To 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 get off topic for a second, to the point of of what you just said on the diversification is the reason why like I these rankings and all that other stuff are, are can be kind of silly and talking about some yeah. of these things it's like sometimes you just need to like you might be have taken you know Jarvis Landry in three other drafts and you're in the same spot and he's available again and you're like well I got a ton of Jarvis already let me just take a shot on somebody else so if something does happen gotta, he doesn't kill me got to spread it out sometimes I mean obviously there's your guys that you want to latch on to and but and but you can't be doing that at the top of the draft with all the players because it just one player gets hurt it can't you can't be ruining multiple multiple teams you know right. now if there's a player like a Corey Clement or something last year and he's free you put him on all your teams because if he gets sure. hurt you don't lose anything different, different. completely different right yeah right. But I like the I like the ten spot drop that just makes it easier to get him because good point. I always want to take Jarvis when I'm on. Yeah, the block. I mean I think That's he's that just safe a safe floor. He's a really good player, and even Consistent. if it doesn't happen, 
great this year. The, they're he's, saying they're going to expand his role, maybe get him down the field a little bit. Who cares if they do or don't? He's, they should, they should, <laughs> they they should they have a ton of weapons. Yeah, they can't see. They should have his him. kind of routes and all that stuff. Should be he should have plenty of room wide after open. The catch. And he's I a, think this. 37 is going to be 40 before you know it and 42 and then when you get in your draft if you got a lake startup just like jay wayne said landry keeps getting cheaper and cheaper and pounce yeah because you're not and he's, you're he's, going to be buying him at places that you haven't been able to get him in two years because of his production and you saw his touchdown ceiling rise up last year i think yeah. at nine it's a very yeah. strong number with jake cutler yeah yeah i mean let's i'm i'm all in on some some, uh, and let me just say just before Landry. we leave off of Landry, just what Jay said is touchdowns he had, and all of it came like within the from the eleven yard or in or something like that. And yes, I've heard it. I know what people are saying about Cleveland's backfield and those short, you know, ten yard line and in red zone trips won't be getting Landry's not gonna get peppered. Maybe not, but you know he can do it. And even though this is dynasty and we talk about winning now and all that stuff, like you can't just play for what's going to happen in the first oh, four weeks of the no. season. So, yes, there's a very talented backfield for the Cleveland Browns right now. All of a sudden, they got studs everywhere and they got Josh Gordon's got arms bigger than Jay Wayne's head, which is hard to do. Like, <laughs> just because Jay you know, Wayne got a big dome, you can't, what you're calling it? <laughs> you can't, you can't assume Land, you, you can basically assume Landry's not going to get half that love in the red zone target area, but we've seen, we know he can operate in space in short right. area spaces like that to That's get what I was open. Saying. Like you're not just he drafted can just do it, it might not be exactly. great to start off with. He's, exactly. You've seen him do all this stuff before. He's great after the catch. He's a fantastic player. Well, this the reason I just, wanted to say that is because people, if somebody hears Jay Wayne say that and be like, well, but the Browns have three awesome running backs and he's not going to get yeah, the target. Yeah. He might not get the targets right away, but you know, the talents there for Jarvis and just, he's only 25 years old. Take him up. Let that ADP continue Let it to keep slide getting back. Cheaper and I'll Let take, him get cheaper. Again, we were taking all the Jarvis last year. We'll take it all again. It's because my brain's bigger, Big Coach. <laughs> I would say you guys have similarly sized heads. You know what they say about a guy with a big head? What's that? Big hat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Idiot. All right. At least, right. At least yeah. neither one of you guys are visor guys. Let's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the backwards visor is the worst. <laughs> Where are we going now? We're going home. Just kidding. We're actually going to do another show, but we're going to wrap this show up, put a little bow with the on gong. it. gong. We're going to wrap it up with the gong. With a gong hit. And, uh, if you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. If you're on iTunes, hit subscribe. Please give us that five-star review. Thank you for anyone who has already done that. We see those we numbers. See some, we see some bumps. Yeah, we see it go up, so shout out to everyone that has done it. Shame on you if you haven't. Just <laughs> kidding. Just kidding. The old Don't. Catholic guilt right there. You yeah. Should... <laughs> <laughs> you say your rosary. Um... I used to be Catholic, so I can make fun of Catholics. <laughs> he's since, he since rescinded. Yeah. His. I used to be Catholic. As <laughs> soon as you don't get married in a Catholic church, that shit is not recognized. They kick you out. Yeah. See My you later. grandmother was not happy about that oh, one. Oh, no. She doesn't listen to this, though, so. <laughs> <laughs> she hates football. She's like, why don't, they give them, why don't they give them all football? Then they wouldn't have to fight over the one. <laughs> And then she's like, and they all fall down, and, and that's pretty funny. I left I left with that. But oh, all right, let's get out of here. We're on your any of your platforms of choice: Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Hit subscribe, please, and thank you. Till uh, next show. You've been listening to the FF Dynasties, Married to the Game.